if I were to graph it. You might look like so. The n equals one case would look like this at time t equals zero, and it's a nor it's a standing wave, so it's just going to oscillate back and forth. At half a period later, it's going to have oscillated down. At a full period, it's going to oscillate back up. N equals two. Will look like so. At time t equals zero, and like that. So, at a half a period later, the dash line is a half a period later. This is the familiar case of lambda is two L. This is the familiar, familiar case lambda equal to L. This is the case for n equals three. Again, um, at time t equals zero, it looks like this. The dash line represents half a period later because it's just a standing wave. Things are oscillating up and down like this, but not traveling left and right. And this will be the case of lambda is 2L over 3. It's important to note that the uncertainty principle applies here. We have a state of definite EM or H bar omega M, which means that delta E is zero and delta T goes to infinite. That's what we mean by a stationary state. Once you put it in that energy state, it doesn't have a short lifetime, it stays there forever. However, We don't have a definite momentum, P, or H bar K, and that's because we have a superposition <coughs> of two traveling waves to make a standing wave. Both have the same frequency omega, but one is opposite sign of the other. So as a result, we have a spread of momentum. And that's okay, because we actually confine this particle to a box. We have delta x on the order of L. So we expect a delta p. So we'll come back to that more in the future. The other thing to point out about this particle requires 
requires it to have an energy. It can't just be sitting at rest in a box. Because energy number one is h squared over 8mL squared, which is greater than zero. Energy number two is higher, of course. But this is again expected from their uncertainty principle, because this minimum energy is, ju is just equal to the uncertainty of momentum squared divided by 2m. And so we, by the axiom of uncertainty principle, again, we have always some uh, average for the momentum squared, even if we don't have an average for the momentum itself. And as a result, confining a particle requires it to have bigger and bigger energy as L goes to zero. So for a, an atomic system where L is in the order of EV, uh, excuse me, nanometers, and energy has become on the order of EVs. For a nuclear system where L is in the order of femtometers, energy has become on the order of MEVs. And as we said before, the basic physics of many uh, bound systems can be predicted just based on the act of confining them and requiring them to sit inside of a, a box. Uh, the uncertainty principle gives a certain characteristic energy to such systems.